Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Meso Terrican Returning Series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Project. And somehow the entire month of September is beyond us, and we are at the last Thursday of the month. You know what that means? It's the FPGA Gaming News Roundup. We're going to be talking about everything that happened in the month of September, and how that's going to inform the future of Mr. FPGA. But before we get too far involved, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But one of the biggest pieces of news this month is just how Mr. FPJ is transforming from one thing to another, pun very much intended for the Tag Anywhere content you're seeing here in Donkey Kong 64. But let's jump into the news and talk about each subject individually. Now we do know that the Jurassic DE25 Nano has a price and will be either shipping soon or is already shipping. Do not rush out and buy this thing. We have absolutely no idea if it's going to be useful to the Mr. FPGA community. We don't know if it'll ever be adopted. It is just an object that exists that could potentially be a Mr. 2 or a Mr. Pro. So it'll be interesting to see what if any movement there is on the DE25 Nano because on the logic element side is only a lift off of about 30,000 logic elements over the DE10 Nano. But the nice thing is it resolves a lot of the memory bandwidth issues at least on paper that are dealing with on Mr. FPJ. There's 128 megabytes of RAM soldered to the board, leaving both GPIO banks open, so if people wanted to potentially make some cart readers for Mr. FPJ, it would be doable on this board. Additionally, the memory bandwidth issues would pretty much be solved. Those few cores that we have on Mr. FPJ, like the Saturn core and the N64 core, where memory latency can cause a few slowdowns and there are other issues in games. Now, again, this isn't a guarantee that this thing is going to be a Mr. 2 or a Mr. Pro. It could just end up being a board that Jurassic releases that doesn't really get adopted by the community because the reality is no board can be a Mr. 2 even if it has better specs until everyone that actually does Mr. stuff rallies around that board and says this is going to be our next target development platform. So don't get too excited, don't get too disappointed, we just really don't know what is going to happen. So we're just going to have to wait around for more news, maybe we'll have it in the back quarter of the year, maybe it'll be in 2026. But the wild thing is, it's already 9 months through 2025 and I released my first Mr. video in the spring of 2020. I've been talking about this project for over 5 years and the idea that we're on the precipice of potentially a new board is fun in its own right. And because Robert FPJ Zoom Spots is bringing the Mr. FPJ core over to Mod Retro, and he has the ability to keep it open source and backport any of the fixes and changes to Mr. FPJ. If we had that DE25 Nano and it was adopted as at least a fork, maybe a Mr. Pro, maybe a Mr. 2, I think you definitely see some improvements in some of those cores. But don't get disappointed that this isn't the biggest uplift compared to the DE10 Nano or any of the clones out there. It could be fun, it could be nothing, we're just going to have to wait and find out. But I want to be very clear about one thing when you guys start thinking about a Mr. FPJ2 project what it could do and what it couldn't do because I always get questions about when is it going to run GameCube, PlayStation 2, or Xbox. The reality is maybe 2035 a part would be cheap enough to actually get it done at a normal price. But the second reality is people need to actually want to make that core and something like GameCube, PlayStation 2, or Xbox would be a team event. And honestly I don't even think there's a developer out there that's going to have the spare time to actually make something like that possible. So don't get excited, don't get disappointed, don't think you're going to be playing GameCube and FPGA anytime soon. Don't you would even want to. If you want a better than GameCube experience, go right over to Dolphin and load up those games and you will have a better time than you would have on an FPJ board even in the next decade. But I want to be very clear about what we're looking at and it's definitely not GameCube or anything else in that generation. Moving over to the arcade side of things, Hotego this month released his core for golfing greats and even though it's in beta and has some glitches, it is a new arcade game to play, which in and of itself is fun even if there's no reason to play it because Neo Turf Masters is playable on Mr. FPJ. It is a great technological achievement because this game has a very fun studio 3D chipset on it that basically makes 2D look about as close to 3D as you can possibly get in this era. But the real important thing is this is step one in getting a Capcom CPS3 core made. Because once Golf and Greats is 100% finished, then Hotego can move on to Run and Gun, which uses a frame buffer as well, and that's going to lead into the development process of something like a Capcom CPS3 FPJ core. And even though I think everyone voted wrong and should have picked IGS PGM over the Capcom CPS3, it will definitely be fun to have something like that in the future. Now, as far as the timing is concerned, again, I do not know. It could be in three months, it could be in a year, but it is in progress. 
I know that is one of the most requested cores when it comes to Mr. FPGA, that Capcom CPS3. And don't think just because this game is pseudo 3D as is running gun that it doesn't help inform anything on the actual Capcom CPS3 side of things because those games are pure 2D. It's all down to the frame buffer and that underlying technology because Hotego uses his own framework. So getting these cores made not only gives you fun new arcade games to play in something like Mr. FPGA, but it also allows him to get one step closer to that Capcom CPS3 core. But leave me a comment down below and you tell me what's your favorite game on the Capcom CPS3. For me, it would be somewhere between Red Earth and Third Strike. I do like the JoJo games, but just never loved the anime, never really watched it, so I don't have any actual emotional attachment to that. But this, again, is just the evolutionary process of getting that Capcom CPS3 core over, and I know it is one that a lot of people want, and I definitely think it could be useful in the competitive scene because Capcom CPS3 boards are quite expensive, and until you repair them and basically modify them, they're also very delicate, so getting an FPJ core would be great for long-term usage, and I can't wait to see what Hotego does next. Now moving over to the CDI core, this one got a big update this month as well with rudimentary DVC or digital video cartridge support added in because the CDI could have the option to have that cart put into the actual console and that would open up a ton of different games. So really if you're a CDI collector, I'm sure you have that cart because otherwise you're leaving a lot of the library on the table. And even though this is not done, it can still be glitchy and won't run every single game. It really is one of the first instances of the DVC cart actually even getting emulated, whether an FPGA or a software emulator. Unfortunately, something like Thunder in Paradise can get into the game, but you don't have all the videos, so you can't enjoy Hulk Hogan just hamming it up on screen. But hopefully soon that does work, and trust me, the minute it does, you're going to be seeing a lot of Hulk Hogan do some Thunder in Paradise shit, because that's what everyone wants to see. The game is actually relatively fun, and maybe my favorite CDI game ever made but it's not like we have a ton to actually pick through from that and this is just footage of the windows or dos version of the game can't remember now when i captured this one and trust me when i say thunder in paradise is an absolute vibe and the cdi version of the game does have the best video quality once that dvc cartridge is fully incorporated into something like mr fpga so you're in for an absolute treat when something like that actually starts working but we also saw some footage of the seventh guest big thanks to andy d for helping capture the cdi stuff for me and you could tell again that this is doing a lot more than it was before and even though cdi was a failed console and not that many people actually want to collect for it a lot of people would love to play the games and experience them so having something like this preserved and playable on mr fpj is a big deal not just because you're getting a new console, but because you don't have to go out and spend a fortune trying to collect the original hardware and all of the games to actually sit down and enjoy them. So maybe not the best set of games you could get on a console, but the overall effort here, 10 out of 10 commendable, and it's getting much better with that DVC cart put in. Believe me, comment down below and you tell me, do you own a CDI or not? Because I would be kind of curious to see who does. Now popping over to the NES and Famicom core for just a moment, there were some updates to this one as well this month, bringing in some more accuracy test results, because some people were going through some of the accuracy testing in of itself and finding out that Mr. FPJ didn't pass 125 of 125 tests. Now interestingly enough, the only emulator that will do that is for tool-assisted speedruns only. It does not have audio and you can't actually play games on it. So as far as Mr. FPJ is concerned, of the 125 tests out there, it has the highest accuracy rating of any way to play something like NES games outside of original hardware. But the interesting thing is even original hardware can fail some of these tests, and my sharp point Famicom did 122 out of 125. So the reality is some hardware can even be less accurate than perfect depending on the hardware for vision or how old it is. And of the tests that are being failed, absolutely none of these affect gameplay, sound, or visuals whatsoever. You would have no idea that anything was failing or changing unless you actually measured it. it reminds me of Futurama where there was a horse race and Professor Farnsworth was upset and said, you affect the outcome of the race by measuring it. That's basically what we have here. The measurement says that four of the tests are going to fail, but the reality is if you didn't know about that in a video format or didn't read an article, you'd have no idea because you can't see anything, hear anything, or feel anything in the controls that would allow you to really realize that something was quote-unquote not working correctly. But even that being said, people went in, they've added mappers, fixed up some of the code to pass these synthetic tests, even if the reality is it'll change nothing in your gameplay experience. It it just goes to show how dedicated people are and how far Mr. FPJ is willing to push itself. 
Now moving over to Taki Udon for just a bit, there's a lot of updates there as well, and Superstation 1 should be shipping relatively soon. It's one of those things we've seen PCBs, we've seen the populated PCBs. If you go over to his Twitter now, I haven't done the video yet, you're going to see samples of the injection molding and even what looks like basically a fully realized retail product. So this is definitely something that is going to be coming up quickly. People are going to be having these things delivered and hopefully soon a review unit will arrive so I can go through the entire thing with you, talk about everything it does, and give it a full review. Because as if it's as good as the Mr. Pine people are in for a big treat, but of course I'll give you the honest answers when it does come in. But I love the Taki Udon Retro Remake about updating everyone throughout the entirety of the development process, from original concepts and CAD drawings all the way through to bare PCBs and prototype boards, even showing that he's gotten rudimentary N64 cartridge reading running on the Superstation 1. There has not been a bit of information that we haven't been privy to in samples and demos, and I really do like that because obviously with Analog 3D being delayed, it's one of those things people love to see how the sausage gets made for lack of a better term So all these updates have been so important for people to keep track of what's happening So as soon as Superstation 1 arrives I'll definitely do at least one video on a review and if you have any questions I will do a follow-up one as well And then we'll have to see what Retro Remake does next because they have teased that Mr. FPJ handheld and If there is one device I want to see more so than any other It's the ability to take my Mr. FPJ anywhere I want Because I recently did a preview of the game bub and I want that exact same concept except with the full Mr. FPJ ecosystem behind it. If you are wondering, the game bub is still up for crowdfunding and it's very close to getting 100% as of the time of this recording, so maybe go check that one out. Now I don't expect N64 cartridge reading to be a core concrete pillar of the Superstation 1, but it is a fun little party trick and shows that Taki Udon Retro Remake are doing absolutely everything they can to make this thing the most fully featured Mr. FPJ that you could buy and play in the near future. Now just a note on Mod Retro, of course it's not Mr. FPJ, but we now know that the core for the device is going to be Robert FPJ Zoom's boss's Mr. FPJ core, just with some improvements and optimizations that aren't possible on the current DE10 Nano board, hence me talking about the DE25 Nano in the beginning of the video. The great thing is, again, Robert has confirmed that it is going to be open source code, so any improvements he makes on the Mod Retro side of things can be backported over to Mr. FPJ if it does fit. And any other future Mr. FPJ project. So even if you find some improvements that can't come over to a DE10 Nano, whatever the next Mr. FPJ 2 board would be, he is going to be able, and he said he will bring all of those improvements over so long as they work on a technical perspective. And that's just awesome because I'm always advocating for open hardware and open FPJ developments and basically all the code being open source. So it's great that Robert is working with Mod Retro. And again, before you leave the comment down below, you can love the company, you can hate the company. I do not care how you feel about it. I leave you the ability to choose. Do not think that talking about it in the news is advocacy for the company or me saying that I don't like the company. I deliver facts and the people that get mad at me for delivering those facts, I don't know what to tell you. If that makes you want to unsubscribe, you know where the button is because I will always talk about whatever I want to on this channel, objectively giving you information. If that upsets you, then I'm sure there's somebody else out there that you can basically go and watch their videos who will mirror your opinions because here I let people think for themselves so long as they're polite so you can say whatever you want in the comments down below just realize I am watching and don't make dad angry and come into the comments because he will start booting people but that is the news for the month of September on Mr. FPJ we got three more months to go in the year but December is always pretty quiet so don't expect a ton to happen there but I'll see you guys next time bye bye